Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Wednesday, November 15th at 9.58 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Bringing you a huge message from scientists who today, across the spectrum, issue a dire warning about climate change. Notice how they put it again in quotes. It's because it's been 25 years since the last lie. And people are catching on. Well, they had to go big this time. Back in 1992, a group of fake scientists from around the world told us in no human terms that we were ruining the planet Earth because of human actions such as deforestation, pollution, and ozone depletion. All that is true, by the way. And we are on a dire course that would lead to a planet unable to support life. That could be nonsense. As you can imagine, things haven't improved much. So now, this week, 15,000 scientists from 184 countries joined together to issue the second notice for the 25th anniversary of their original notice. Their message, things have gotten much, much worse, and soon it will be too late to do anything about it. Unfortunately, this is total bullshit. What you're looking at is global death and death rates due to extreme weather events from 1900 to 2010. There's a clear, epic drop-off on the amount of global deaths and death rates due to extreme weather. Now, if extreme weather events were increasing, the death rates would increase. If you don't believe that graph, this is the global annual death rate from natural disasters. You can see here drought killed a lot of people back here in the 20s. And the amount of deaths from natural disasters is decreasing, including drought, flooding, storms. So if these events were increasing, the global annual death rates from these disasters would be increasing too. So they're absolutely lying to you because this is when the warning came out, 1999. And here you can see a decrease. And here you can see a decrease. Now, I want to show you something, and this is related to cycles, specifically the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, which you can see very vividly on this chart, where it peaks here in 1890, and it hits the floor in 1930, and it peaks again in the 40s, and it hits the floor in the 70s, and it peaks again today. And now it's dropping off in the late 2000s. Because this is a 60-year multi-decadal oscillation in the North Atlantic, which is directly related to the annual count of hurricanes. Because when the water's warmer, you have a maximum number of hurricanes. Here in 1888, there were 20, because it was the warmest <laughs> the North Atlantic had ever been for 60 years. And then again, 60 years later, in 1935, there were 21 hurricanes in the North Atlantic. Seeing a pattern? The warmest, another 21. This is the same cycle repeating itself. These are cycles. These 15,000 scientists are lying or stupid. Those are the facts. I guess they didn't see any of the data. They don't know about this. They didn't go to college and learn about climate, climate cycles, the way the Earth operates cyclically. You know, solar cycles, the way they operate up and down and up and down, like the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation operates because of solar and lunar effects on the northern hemisphere. Let's get to uh, a seismic update, guys. There's been some uptick here in North Korea. There's no fault, major fault zones in that area. It's not around the Ring of Fire. It's inland. There was a number of larger earthquakes. Plus, we can continue to see the large, moderate magnitude earthquakes around the Ring of Fire and elsewhere. Uh, there has been a pretty substantial uptick in moderate earthquakes in the San Andreas area since the earthquake yesterday. These are all 2.5 or greater. 
There's nine there. But let's talk about North Korea. Here's the earthquake today. I'll bring you back. That's a building collapsing back here. You can see it in the very beginning collapse. Clearly, these are Koreans running for the most part. And that can be, can be the death of you, just a 5.4. <clears throat> and so they're pretty upset about this because it's not really a, si a, a highly seismic area. It is moderately. But another South Korean earthquake causes more alarm for seismic activity. I'll leave you links to all these articles. Moving on, we're talking about you, Australia. Record-breaking rain uh, in Australia coming out of the bomb. Now, the, the Bureau of Meteorology tends to lie, obfuscate the truth, and change weather data. But here, you're, they're giving you the truth. And what they're telling you, the Bureau recorded 440.4 millimeters in Maryborough, which fell just more than 50 millimeters shy of the 1882 record. That's a cosmic ray record, 1882 record. It's coming up here in this uh, low part of cycle 11. So this is huge cosmic ray flux happening. Same thing that's happening now as we descend. That's a heads up, Australia. You're breaking 100 in 30-year records. And the bomb is telling the truth about it. Walloping of snow in Yellowknife on Tuesday, a record breaker, 24.2 centimeters fell, beating the previous record, November record, for one day snow total. This is from coming out of Dan Kulak, a meteorologist with Environment Canada, said, the system was most snow that has fallen in one day in Yellowknife in the month of November, for the whole month of November. For the whole month of November, it was the most that ever fell in a day in Yellowknife. Guys, the last record one day was 23.7, February 20th of 1982, but the data is incomplete. These records are going to continue to be shattered across the globe as we descend. Skiing starts Saturday. State opens whiteface, Gore six days ahead of schedule. This is New York. Boom! Man, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced Wednesday that the State Olympic Regional Development Authority will open the Whiteface and Gore Mountain Ski Centers on Saturday, a week ahead of schedule. Crews at Whiteface in Wilmington and Gore in North Creek began making snow on the 7th, giving them a head start. The only way you can make snow is if it's unseasonably cold ahead of schedule, which it is because we're descending into a grand solar minimum. And this is what New York State looks like before Thanksgiving. I don't remember, I remember as a kid going skiing before Thanksgiving in New York. I used to teach at Big Boulder Jack Frost and PA. Till I blew my knee. Biblical disaster, destructive floods, raged through Athens, in Greece, 14 killed, several missing. This is cosmic ray flux on the increase, causing atmospheric rivers and other phenomenon in other countries like Greece. A severe overnight storm turned roads into t of towns on the outskirts of Greek capital Athens into raging rivers. You have to see the videos here, please. Everything is lost. The disaster is biblical, authorities said. Severe weather is expected to continue. So this is one major area near one major city with biblical losses to cosmic ray flux and increased precipitation, the likes of which humanity has never witnessed. Look at that road. This is a storefront in the door. This guy was getting a pack of smokes. It's a heads up. That's a bus. Now, that this is the most incredible picture. This is someone's house and apartment. Look at the torrent here. This is like a shrine to someone's dead cat. This is a highway inner a pass. <laughs> He's just getting on the ramp. Just coming on the in-ramp here. 
Oh, what do people, what are they thinking sometimes, you know? Yeah, let me just try it. What is that, like four, eight feet deep? I could probably make it. <laughs> oh, so if you see four or eight feet of flowing water, don't drive into it. It's usually not a good idea. There's tons of videos here in foreign languages that you can peruse and have a blast and watch the cosmic ray flux puzzle everyone in the meteorological industry. <laughs> this is crazy. Global warming, guys. Could have nothing to do with cosmic rays. Neither could the volcanic uptick. Phil Vox raises the Canalon volcano alert to level two. This is a heads up, Philippines. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology has raised the alert status for Canalon, Canleon, we'll figure out how to say that later, volcano from level one to level two because of moderate unrest Wednesday on the 15th. That would be today. The last eruption of this volcano took place in June of 2016. So can Leon Volcano Seismic Monitoring Network recorded a total of 279 deep volcanic earthquakes during the last 24 hours. Hello? That's a big number. That's a big uptick. Since August 18, 2017, the number of earthquakes detected per day has continued to increase. That volcano will probably blow. So heads up, Philippines. Get away from that volcano. Now, the California rice crop took a hit. Moving into crop losses. This is coming out today. There's a 10% loss because of multiplicity of things occurring in the growing season. They had to plant late. They planted less acreage, almost 15% less. And then the summer was too hot and the rice grew too high and the plants grew too tall too quickly and on and on. So this type of problems with blight and insects and other damage, hail, heavy rain, flooding, drought, history will repeat itself as we predict moving forward and we're reporting on it. Let's report on fireballs. I said that we report on fireballs on this channel because I think there's an increase in fireballs and we're going to save this article to last and let's come over to the fireballs. And sure enough, today there was an increase in fireballs. Can you imagine? A very bright fireball exploded over Arizona today. It was the fourth fireball within 10 hours. And we're going to cover the other two, making it four. One we covered yesterday over PA. Very bright fireball straight through the night sky in Arizona. The event lasted up to seven seconds and did not appear a good candidate for the Tarids. We'll get to that. We're going to discuss the Tarid meteor showers tonight. I made a graphic to explain that there's multiple streams of objects and that we haven't really gone through a thick stream recently and that we may in the near future. Now this is the one of the four fireballs that have been reported within 10 hours. This is in Arizona. You'll get links to three of the fireballs. The Arizona footage is not that good. It's just a quick little streak in some of these videos, but there's a lot of different coverage of it. I let that download, and that's what it looks like in still. This is the zone. Here's Flagstaff. This is the visible zone. Only visible in AZ. All you Azeronites. Here, we'll, we'll get a quick review. Right in front, right here. Boom. Barely visible. Did you barely visibly see it? That's it. Way ahead. Pew. Okay, so that's kind of a crappy one. 43 reports coming out on this fireball in Ohio. I'll leave you links to the Ohio fireball. A bright fireball was seen streaking through the night sky uh, over Ohio, United States on November 15th. This is the third of four major fireball events within 10 hours. You'll get links in, to this video too. It's just a fireball. They look the same, guys. It's green plasma discharge that's coming from electrostatic energy because one object is going in close proximity to another object and there's a static discharge. These objects are moving 26,000 miles an hour. <laughs> so it's quite amazing. Four major fireballs, very bright fireball explodes over Arizona, the fourth in 10 hours. This fireball over Western France had 70 reports. You'll get links to this. It entered the atmosphere over the city of Bordeaux, Western France, 2132 UTC on November 14th as the second major fireball event within five hours, and it lasted three seconds. 
major fireball events. Boom. What's going on? Well, on June 8th, this article came out that a thousand foot wide asteroid could hit the Earth was discovered by astronomers. You'll get links to this. It's an interesting article. Scientists have discovered a new branch of the Taurids, a meteor stream that could pose a major risk to Earth with asteroids up to 1,000 feet wide, flying past us every few years. Now, guys, if this hits the ocean, one of these objects, and they will because the ocean covers most of the planet, it would be a catastrophic tsunami and take out most of the coastal cities surrounding the ocean it hit. I mean, we're talking a you know, thousand foot wave. So I'll leave you links to this. So they have found a new uh, stream that could pose a major, major risk to Earth. And that was just recently. Now, what are the Taurids? For those of you that don't know, the Taurids are a spectacular meteor storm that happens from September 10th all the way to December 10th. There are two parts, the Southern Taurids and the Northern Taurids. And these two meteor streams are separate, but they overlap here between October 20th and November 20th, which if you come look at my timestamp here, is still five more days of the overlap. And a lot of times the beginning cusp and the end cusps are the nicest part. But this is a double peak period we're in from the 20th to the November 20th. And that's a heads up. Uh, I'll leave you links to that picture. Now the Tards are an annual meteor shower associated with Comet Anki. The Tards are actually two separate showers, like I just showed you, with a southern and northern component. Now the southern Tards originate from Comet Anki while the northern Taurids originate from the asteroid 2004 TG10, and they are named after the radiant point in the constellation Taurus where, they're, where they are seen to come from the sky. And because of their occurrence in late October and November, they are also called Halloween fireballs. So we're going to go look where that part of the sky is and when you can, where you can go outside and look for them on a regular basis for the next few weeks. I'll leave you links to this. And what it has is, is a night sky map. Okay, what happened? It's got a night sky map for the Taurids. And we just have to wait for it to download here. It's quite nice. Guys, if you're traveling this Thanksgiving, here's the grand solar minimum forecast. I'll leave you links to this map. It's showing that on November 24th, Friday, the entire East Coast, uh, the majority of the areas are going to be 14 degrees below average. All of West Texas, 14 to 16 degrees below average. This goes all the way up to Maine. It's going to be below normal for the entire eastern seaboard all the way through Florida. The entire state of northern Florida will be 10 degrees below normal. So here's your Thanksgiving forecast. We'll come back to the Tarids and I'll see if I can get this uh, visual, the night sky visual for you. Where to look for the Tarids. There it is. So this map is really nice. So here's the horizon, southwest, west. So if you look to the west, and a little to the south, this is where they uh, emanate. Here's the constellation of Taurus, and you'll see a bright star here called Aldebaran. If you know where Rigel is, you guys know where Orion is? So Orion's coming up here at like midnight, so you have to go out at like 3 a.m. here if you're in the mountains to get a good visual of this. But starting at midnight, Taurus and Aldebaran are up in a pretty good spot. So you can spot this stuff. And you have a map now. So I made this visual to show you that these two streams happen at the same time. And the overlap is from October 20th to November 20th. So that's your best viewing opportunity for any of the Taurids. That's a heads up. This is Comet Anki related. I'll leave you the Thanksgiving forecast. And let's move on to some of the recent talks. Some of the nonsense from these 15,000 scientists that are warning the Earth is going to shit.
So there's carbon dioxide emissions reports that are coming out and the carbon budget for 2017. And this article is coming from the conversation. It says fossil fuel emissions hit record high. Global greenhouse emissions from fossil fuels and industry are on track to grow by 2% this year, reaching a new record high of 37 billion tons of carbon dioxide. A new record of 37 billion tons of carbon dioxide according to the 2017 global carbon budget. Now here's an article from USA Today about the global carbon budget. And it says global emissions from all human activities will reach an all-time record 45 billion tons in 2017. And in the same day, an article here says 37 billion tons, a new record high of 37 billion tons according to the global carbon budget. And this article says 45 billion tons according to the global carbon project. So that's the state of climate science. <laughs> they don't even know their own numbers from their own report. And the mainstream media is publishing this and no one's fact checking a GD thing because they don't give an F. They want you to be scared to death and pay your taxes. And we talked about this yesterday. Artificially cooling the planet is a risky strategy. New research shows. Well, I'm glad that some research has at least a little bit of common sense. I'll leave you links to common sense article about artificial cooling and how it's actually risky. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. Check out our Patreon page. Give us support there so that we can continue to do excellent reporting and keep you informed about the earth changes that are going to be happening now and ongoing into the future. Be safe.